Hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Agniva. I'm, I'm a software engineer at Mattermost. And today I'm going to talk about the database connection pool. But before I talk about that, I need to tell you a little bit about what led me to dive deep into this in the first place. And to talk about that, I need to start off with a story. So this is a high level architecture of Mattermost. First things first, what is Mattermost? I'm sure a lot of you have heard about it, but for those who haven't, Mattermost is an open core collaboration platform that customers can use to deploy in their own environment and keep their data secure. So this is a high level architecture and basically it's just a Go application talking to a database. But we also have a cloud offering and this is where things started to get a little bit more interesting because in cloud, you would want to use your database resources as efficiently as possible. But when we wrote Mattermost, it wasn't written as a multi-tenant software from the scratch, which basically meant that one database can only be used by one Mattermost instance. And this is where it started to raise some problems because now we have multiple Mattermost installations running, but since one installation could only use one database, as we started to have more and more customers, we needed more and more databases, which meant that it wasn't scalable, costs started to increase. Okay, this isn't a new problem, we added a DB proxy, and we went with PG Bouncer, which is a well-known and battle-tested product. But in PG Bouncer, the connection pool is at a per user, per database level. And as I said earlier, one database could only be used by one Mattermost instance, which meant that all we were sharing here are the connections coming from the same node from the same customer installation. But connections from different nodes, from different customer installations, used a different connection pool, which meant that even if we were still sharing some connections, as we added more and more customers, we still needed to add more and more databases. Not a fun thing. What we really needed here was a way to be able to share connections across multiple databases. And we did that using Postgres schemas. So a schema is basically a virtual separation of tables within the same database. So with this, what we could do is we could allocate multiple customers in different schemas, all within the same database. So this is basically what it looked with the new model. Now we have three customers in schema one, schema two, schema three, all within the same database. And let's say that we have allocated the connection pool size to be 20 for each customer. And there is a PG Bouncer setting called max DB connections. And if we set that to 20, the maximum number of outgoing connections to the database will be always a fixed number. Now, even if we added a new customer inside database one, it can be schema four, the number of outgoing connections will always be 20. So we have achieved some sort of scalability that like, even if we keep adding more and more customers, the number of connections will still be the same. But here, there is still a small problem. So remember what I said earlier that in PG Bouncer, the connection pool is at a per database per user level. Well, here, the database is the same but the users are still different. And we need different users because we want to scope the visibility of each customer to their own schema, right? So we did that by uh, running the command alter user, user one, user two, or whatever, and set the schema search path to schema one, schema two, schema three. So basically the user names for each of these customers were different, which meant that the pools were different. Now you would ask that well, the number of outgoing connections is still the same. That is true, but what's happening is these three connection pools of, let's say, total 60 connections 
We're fighting for 20 outgoing connections to actually the database. So as a result, what happened was that there were frequent connections and disconnections to the RDS instance, which led to a lot of CPU usage. And this created a lot of issues. So at the end, we were just wondering, why is this so hard? I mean, surely we aren't the first ones who ran into this problem. There are open source solutions out there we can just like use. Turns out there isn't, at least in the open source world. So to recap, Mattermost was a single tenant application, which meant that we could only use one database for one customer. And we started to use PG Bouncer when we uh, use Mattermost in cloud, and we ran into issues with that. So we allocated multiple customers under different schemas in the same database to limit the number of connections. But still, that led to this frequent problem of connection and disconnection. So what we really needed was something like this. What we want is to have multiple customers allocated inside a single database under multiple schemas, but just have a single connection pool. So these were the options that we were left with. Number one, we just rewrite Mattermost to be multi-tenant. Of course, this means that we use a single table to contain data for multiple customers, and that will just solve the PG Bouncer issue. Or we modify PG Bouncer itself. We could also build something of our own. And this talk is about what happened when we went with option three. Option one wasn't very palatable because it would just simply take too long to rewrite Mattermost from scratch. Option two was possible, but the issue was that most of our backend team was knowledgeable in Go, and everything like our entire tech stack was Go-based. So it was difficult to, to like get and uh, read PG Bouncer code and modify that. So we started to build something of our own. And that's how Perseus was born. Perseus was the Greek hero who killed Medusa, and the snakes in Medusa's head were the connections. So this is a high-level architecture of Perseus. Clients will set the schema name in the data source while connecting to the database. And Perseus will store that. And while fetching a connection from the pool, it will set the schema search path before handing over the connection to the client. This is all the secret sauce there is, that Perseus knows what schema a client customer is connecting to, and it stores that. And it dynamically sets the schema search path before handing over the connection to the client. And in this way, it can switch between multiple schemas while pointing to the same database. OK, so this was all about what led me to dive deep into this. Now let's talk a bit about the connection pool. So at a high level, you will have a client connection acquiring a connection, making SQL queries, and then releasing that. And throughout its lifetime, it will do this multiple times. It will acquire, make queries, release, acquire, make queries, release, and then eventually be closed. And there are multiple instances of these client connections all interacting with the actual connection pool. Now let's take a deeper dive into the innards of the connection pool. So let's take a look at first the acquire connection flow. We get a request. And then we first check the connection slice. So the connection slice is exactly what it sounds like. It is just a slice of free connections. And if there is a free connection existing, we'll just return it. But if there aren't any free connections, then we check to see if our number of open connections has exceeded the maximum limit of open connections or not. If it has, that means we cannot open any new connections then we need to 
make a request to the connection request queue. And when a connection is free, then we will return the connection. But if we are under our limit, then we can just simply create a new connection with the database and give it back to the client. So this was about the acquire connection flow. Now let's take a look at the release connection flow. Here, first we check if there is any request pending in the connection request queue and just give the connection back. Or if there aren't any pending requests, we just place the connection back to the connection slice. These are more or less the components of the connection pool, but there is also one additional component, which is the connection reaper. This is just a go routine which keeps running from time to time, and it cleans off any connections which have exceeded their max lifetime or max idle time. So, to wrap things up, we successfully deployed Perseus in production, but this is not actually a success story. We decided not to continue because there was a slight security loophole. So, if you remember, in the earlier model, we had dedicated users per customer, but for Perseus to work, it needed that user to be able to access all schemas in the database. And then Perseus needed to set the schema search path to be able to switch between the schemas, right? But this also means that somebody or some code from within Mattermost can also run the same query to set the schema search path and can access data from other customers. This is very unlikely because, of course, like we deploy Mattermost, so we know what code we deploy. but we didn't feel that much comfortable to, to allow such a security loophole to exist. But if you aren't handling with sensitive customer data and everything is internal, then yeah, it, it, it should work. But at the end of the day, we had a very good understanding of how things work internally. And now we have detailed dashboards with uh, what are the max open cons, max idle cons, and we had a very good grasp of how things work at the end of the day. And that's my time.